So a quick follow-up video to one I did before on the Windows Shell Bag. We answered riveting questions such as, what is a shell bag? What is the value of a registry co key called? Hint, that question is the answer to the first question, and the first question is the answer to the second question. We also talked about things that should be considered when interpreting shell bag information, talked about what MRU stands for, most recently used, and just a few other questions that will help you know more about this world of digital forensics. Well, today, or right now, if you just uh, watched that first video, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and read a quick blog from the Sands Institute, which had some interesting information on a shell bag to further our understanding of what this cool sounding term is. It's posted by a guy named Chad Tilbury, and he says, As Windows registry artifacts go, the shell bag keys tend to be some of the more complicated artifacts we have to decipher. But they are worth the effort, giving an excellent means to prove the existence of files and folders, along with user knowledge. Shell bags can be used to answer the difficult questions of data enumeration and intrusion cases, identify the contents of long-gone removable devices, and show the contents of previously mounted encrypted volumes. Information persists for deleted folders, providing an invaluable reference for items no longer part of the file system. So if you think you could hide your tracks by deleting something, Thanks to the way Windows operating systems work, it looks like you are not able to hide yourself so easily. So maybe a good first question would be, what is the value in looking at shell bags? A brief overview. Windows uses the shell bag keys to store user preferences for GUI folder display within Windows Explorer. Everything from visible col columns to display mode information such as icons, details, lists, um, to sort order are tracked. If you have ever made changes to a folder and returned to that folder to find your new preferences intact, then you have seen shell bags in action. In the paper, Using Shell Bag Information to Reconstruct User Activities, the authors write that the shell bag information is available only for folders that have been opened and closed in Windows Explorer at least once. In other words, the simple existence of a shell bag subkey for a given directory indicates that the specific user account once visited that folder. All right, there's a good question. So what can you learn from a shell bag sub key? The answer should be something like you can learn that the specific user accounts want, once visited that folder. Thanks to the wonders of Windows registry, last write timestamps, we can also identify what that folder, when that folder was visited or last updated and correlate with the embedded folder Mac times also stored by the key and I'm sure that's not the Mac we know about in networking. In some cases historic file listings are available given much of the information can only be found within shell bag keys. It is little wonder why it has become a fan favorite. Now in this next paragraph, we get some cool personal information or about a personal experience. Um, the person says that the architecture, oh, and the person's name is Chad Tilbury. I should be respectful there. So Chad says, the architecture of shell bag keys within Windows XP is well understood and has been broadly covered. However, this is not the case with the Windows 7 format. So for me in 2019, that's quite a long time ago because now Windows 10 is out. But that'd be interesting to see if Windows 10 is the new thing that is not the case. That is to say, it is not well understood. So for anybody watching this video, now is your opportunity to pivot from the knowledge you're gaining, or the knowledge you have gained, to the opportunity to gain some new knowledge using and looking for patterns. I'm sure the system that Microsoft uses to create shell bags in Windows 10 will have some similarities to all the ones they did previously. So Chad says, I have recently had good luck using shell bags within computer intrusion cases to show evidence of file system enumeration by attackers using compromised accounts. These systems have largely been Windows XP or Windows Server uh, 2003, and when I first sat down to revive review a Windows 7 system, I was severely disappointed. Following the trend of many of our favorite registry keys being updated in Windows 7, the shell bag keys underwent a major transformation. Gone are the familiar shell and shell no roam and stream MRU categories that respectively denoted network, local, and removable device folders. Data from all of those locations still appear to be collected, but all three artifact categories are now, now stored within the shell subkey. 
The keys themselves are stored as a slightly different binary format, making manual deciphering even more painful. Alright, Microsoft improving things by making them worse. The keys themselves are stored as a slightly different binary format, making manual deciphering even more painful. I wonder what I wonder what use Microsoft could have seen people would have by them making this change. Oh well, this is just one guy's opinion. Let's go ahead and finish that up. He says, I was beating my head against a wall trying to reverse engineer the new format when Rob Lee suggested I do something really smart. Leverage an existing tool and work backwards. He introduced me to TZ Works shell bag parser and I was hooked. Besides being the only true Windows 7 shell bag parser I'm aware of, it does a remarkable job of parsing shell bag structures. All right, so he's going to give us a what you need to know, then some nice screenshots of the Windows command prompt. He says using the TZ Works tool to parse shell bags is trivial. It is a common, it is a command line tool with just a few parameters. If you are working on a live system, you can use the list hives parameter to have it identify the available user registry hives. Once you know the paths of the hives you wish to parse, execute sbag.exe and redirect the results to a CSV file. So you're throwing it into an Excel spreadsheet, huh? So that does look pretty useful and at least a lot easier on the eyes to look at. That's a great question. What can the TZ, what was it called again? TZ Works tool do. In this case, what does it mean to parse? All right, so for you to answer that question, you have to dig in a little deeper than just say, it takes a hive and displays it. It takes a hive and it shows a bag number, a modification time. It shows the folder it came from, a particular bag came from, and so on. If you want to know more of what all that means, he writes about it right here. So you could pause or go off and read that on your own. I just love reading comments, as I think many of you do, so here's a good one. Jesse says, you could write a little batch script to do this automatically. Well, let me just end this video by saying thank you, Chad, for making a great blog for me and my students to learn from. They're currently experimenting with different Windows operating systems and messing around with those settings for the sake of a competition we have coming up. So just again, thank you for creating this. And to the rest of you, thank you for learning with me.